These are dark days for fans of the Chevrolet Camaro and Pontiac Firebird because 2002 is the last year that these icons of American horsepower will be built. They'll be gone, but not forgotten, especially by us here at Motor Week. So let's spin those rear tires up one more time and look back through the smoke at our first and last drives in these timeless pony cars. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where we are finally going to start our third, I believe, video on the CTA. Uh, this summer since buying it, all that I've done to this car is actually driven it. And after driving it, of course, like any vehicle, high mile, low mile, otherwise you're going to find things that are wrong with it or just some maintenance that should be done where you make a vehicle even better. To start off, I want to say I'm super happy with the car. This is just very, very nice collector's edition Trans Am. Uh, for those of you that are watching and are here to see track content, this video is not for you. This will be all about F bodies. So coming up soon, we'll have more track video. But this is a 2002 Pontiac Trans Am WS6 Collector's Edition. As you'll notice by the collector's yellow paint color and the graphics on the side of the car. Now there's other unique stuff about the car, such as the unique center caps on the wheels and the decals on the door as well as the unique headliner and floor mats. You can see there the CETA floor mats and there is a CETA trunk mat in the interior that's unique to the cars as well. This is the OEM trunk mat on this car and they're known to wrinkle like this. The leather on top of it shrinks and it just causes this massive uh, wrinkling issue, which is unfortunate. And after doing some research, it seems like there's not a good way to straighten this back out. So if you're an upholstery guy and you know how to relax this material, uh, let me know. You're actually going to help a lot more people than me. But it seems to be that the best way to get this fixed is to actually get a replacement, which I've got right over here from eBay. So let's get this up here. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll lay it out. I mean, Look at how rigid this thing is. You can almost hold it on the end. Yeah, it almost almost sits rigid straight out, so it's banjo tight right now. Um, I'll store that, of course, not getting rid of it, but the most reasonable replacement, you know, without getting custom, is these from is one of these from eBay. Um, I think they're I think I paid like right over 200 bucks for this. I forget what, but you can find it on eBay if you look up CETA trunk mat. They have this in a number of colors and flavors available, but it's a pretty accurate reproduction, I would say. Um, if you know, looking at one, you'll know it's reproduction, probably first of all, by how flat it lays, but second, uh, the stitching is a little bit different. So for those of you interested in buying one of these, here's how the eBay reproduction one looks right here. And then uh, the OEM one has a little bit more robust stitch to it, I guess you could say. It almost looks like, uh, you know, like TIG weld bead would be a good way to put it. It, it kind of looks like that to me at first glance. So the stitching just a lot thicker on this, uh, especially on the wings and whatnot. But uh, to 99.999% of people, uh, you're going to take a look at this, not know any difference, and this is going to look way better in the trunk. So, you know, probably a lot of people would just maybe even forego the trunk mat back here, but unless I can repair the OEM mat, I'd rather just be complete and kind of as it should be. You know, if this is your best option for replacement, like any car, why not? Nothing unique on the back of the car other than the cool license plate I got for it. But there's a couple other things I wanted to show you that I found out about the car since purchasing it. And one of them includes some cool pictures from the prior owner before Tennessee who owned it in Colorado. Now, one fun thing I thought I would show you guys, let's say back in the day, the, the original owner paid $35,330 out the door for it. Now, whatever they paid might be true or not, a quick inflation calculator shows that today, that same car is $60,569 if we just went from 2002 to today in 2024. So, this car right here was $60,000 brand new, which is a lot of money today. I don't care how you slice it. It's a really nice new uh, loaded gas truck. It's uh, any number of things, but that's quite a bit of money to spend on a car for most folks, and that's myself included. So that is a pile of money back in the day. They only made 2,390 of these cars total. I've seen 2,390, 2,400. It's something like that. So this is a pretty limited run for 2002. 
And the idea of these cars is that they are Pontiac's send off to the F body, just like 2002 Chevrolet and Camaro did the uh, 35th anniversary or limited edition Camaro. So with the car, I didn't really show any of the stuff on camera. I got uh, the original window sticker that they actually peeled off really nice and laminated back in the day. And this would be like a delivery sort of sticker, I guess, that might be in the vehicle. One thing I got recently is I got a couple of these off of eBay. These are really hard to find and they finally showed up in my uh, little search box after all this time. These are, I believe, Canadian brochures from 2002. So these are pretty hard to find. Uh, I've only seen them one time recently and there's not much info online about them. But they're the normal 2002 10 page brochure, but they've got a couple other different graphics in them that are a little bit different and unique to the CETA. So we'll do a quick nerd dive on the CETAs and I'll show you some of the stuff you got with them that you wouldn't otherwise see before we hop into today's video. But any 2002 Pontiac, you'll get your 2002 book. And inside of here is where I actually got contact info for the original owner of the car. And she was cool enough to uh, chat a little bit and give me some info and actually send a couple of things that I'll show you. So we'll go over that in a minute. But this book with the CETA, uh, light pen and notepad, tire pressure gauge, and little engine card is something that you got with these cars. So it's kind of cool. You know, if you like F-body stuff, this is total like nerd stuff. But uh, I'm just giving you guys a view of this because this is something that normally you won't see, especially like in a video. But again, CETA, tire pressure gauge. So a couple little trinkets in there, but I'll show you what else came with the car. So this letter is from Marcus Shelley, and I'm just blocking out the VIN on there, but um, anyway, this is the car. It just kind of gives you the breakdown of the car, and there's a certification letter from who upfitted the car back in the day. It would have been received and gotten the graphics and stuff installed on it, so ASC is who did it. Uh, Marcus Shelley is retired from that company, and he does give out these certification letters, and if you're familiar with uh, Ford products, this is similar to maybe getting um, a Marty report. It's, it's similar, it's not the same thing exactly, but what you end up with is kind of a breakdown of what your car is, and it gives you your build number as well. So this car is build number 936 in ASC's records. So that's kind of cool to have. Um, other things that the car would have came with uh, from the dealer are you get this little single page pamphlet here. Um, that's kind of cool. This has been laminated. These are available on eBay pretty readily. So this might be some sort of a sales brochure more than anything, but they come with this. They also come with a little letter saying that you are part of the F-Body Illuminati, I think it says, and there's no other one built better than this one and all that. As we all know, the WS6 or any Firebird is a superior vehicle to the Camaro. That'll be <laughs> an unsettled debate forever, but I'm just joking, I love Camaros too. But I'm gonna show you the pictures that the first owner sent. All right, check this out. Could you possibly find a picture this cool of your car from when it was brand spanking new in 2002 at a now closed drag strip? So Misty had a copy of this photo from when it was new after she bought it and was driving it and was kind enough to send me a couple of copies of it as well as a Pontiac, uh, high performance Pontiac magazine she still had from back in the day. And uh, it's about the collector's edition Trans Am, but this picture is super cool. Um, you really can't pay for this sort of thing. And just to be able to have it with the car that it is, you know, from back in the day, from the original owner who, you know, back in the day I would have never been able to get in contact with is just kind of unheard of. So that's why I wanted to share with you guys some of this back stuff that I've been finding in the background. That's super cool to have. Um, what else have we got? This is just the magazine that she sent to. She's had this since, you know, whatever year this came out, 2002. So she's been sitting on the stuff this whole time and she talked very, very fondly about the car and how much she missed it and stuff. And it was actually really nice talking to her. So uh, Misty, if you see this, which I think you might, um, Thank you for all this stuff. I got it kept in a safe place and I'm working on the car and uh, treating it right and whatnot. But the last thing I'll go over is these little pamphlets that they come with. Um, it's a real oblong kind of thing. It's a little booklet. I have a couple of these that came with who I got from the prior owner. Um, you could have got these for the car too. But last but not least and the most important, something that I'm a little bit ashamed to admit that I spent money on and, and kind of a lot of money is this. Um, I bought this 
before I bought the car, actually, I saw it on eBay and looking back, I got an okay deal on it, but these usually go you know, in the mid hundreds for dollars. <laughs> they're not the cheapest thing ever, but they're uh, not readily available. But when they pop up, they're uh, pretty hard to come by. So this is something I'm gonna have to hide from my son because if he sees it, he's gonna wanna get in there and play with it. So anyway, that's about it for uh, my nerd quest. I've been on for the last, um, you know, going on a year. I got a whole bunch of good stuff. It's documented. We got some original stuff from the original owner, which you really, you just can't pay for. That is the coolest thing to me that I found are, are these pictures from her. I've got a couple more They're on my Instagram page if you want to see them. But um, for those of you that don't believe me, uh, there's a little note here from her. What does it say? I thought this mag article belonged with a car and uh, Deanne. So anyway, thanks for that. I appreciate it more than I can tell you. Let's get right in today's video and we're gonna start servicing the CUTA. Let's see if this one starts. I think I've done any filming with this car since I actually bought it down from uh, my buddy down in Tennessee. So this is actually the first video of it, I think since really. Last year I took the car out on the Black River Rally, uh, which was a lot of fun. And I may do it again this year, but for now, what it needs really bad is a set of brakes. And I gotta go over some of the little bit of the easy maintenance stuff on it, because what I'd really like to do with it this year is probably have it street and or dyno tuned by Carl at uh, Twin Cities Performance. So there's a couple little quirks with the tune in that I think could be dialed in. Another thing will be I'll know how much power it makes and uh, I'll know everything's right. So let's pull this out, let it warm up for a while so I don't just totally milkshake the oil and then uh, we'll get it parked and I gotta go run some errands and maybe tonight I'll get working on the brakes. It. I gave her a little rev and it stumbled really hard. Uh, it kind of did, it sort of went into the condition that it does when I hot start. It seems to start stumbling and misfiring and only hitting on a few cylinders. But anyway, 
car's in super nice shape. This is like a 30,000 mile car, for those of you that are new to the channel. Not the rails. The majority of this needs to come out. So we got a bit of work to do before we can start installing a nice shiny new part. So I'm gonna go through the We're gonna get it. Obviously the first time was to put the Okay, so the car is up in the air on all fours. Uh, nothing to really go over there. But what I did notice, taking a peek at the master cylinders, this fluid is really dark, and of course I'm sure it's original in every way. It's probably never been bled, and there's only like 30,000 miles on the car, so there's not really a reason to, so to say. But what I ended up getting was a set of power stop, brake pads, and rotors. I'll show you the part numbers here while we're talking. And basically, I got them because they are a coated, a fully coated rotor, and what I want to do is make sure that it's going to have an OE type looking finish when it's all done. It'll look very similar to the AC Delco ones. The one reason that I'm swapping all these out is I got a pretty good shutter in the front end while under braking, and as you may know, on the front of your brakes when you feel it up there, it's because you have warped rotors. So obviously these have seen some heat at some point, whenever that might have been, I don't know, but Basically, I'm gonna fix it. So, enough uh, jibber jabbering about this. Let's start taking things apart and get to replacing the front and rear pads and rotors. Well, there you have it. The brake job is done on the car. We're about to move on to the next section of today's video, but I just want to show you a quick look. These are called Genuine Geomet Coated, I believe, uh, rotors, and I did get their matching recommended pads for the front and back as well. So here's a quick view of the rear passenger side, all done and installed. It's gonna look nice behind the wheel. It's gonna look nice behind the wheel once I get these broken and bedded. The swept area is gonna be clear and appear coated like the OEM type ones did. Just a quick view of the front, which I did off camera. I had my number one helper in here with me and uh, we were watching some cartoons and whatnot and we got distracted with the camera. So I did all this off camera. Um, sorry, I know you guys are here to watch this sort of stuff, but I'm telling you and a lot of you guys know that sometimes when you got little helpers in the garage, being able to multitask, let alone do the thing in the first place is pretty well impossible. So I did get this done. I didn't film it, but as you can see, front and back done on both sides, looking good. I didn't paint the calipers or caliper brackets or anything like that because frankly, they're in pretty good shape. So I did find that the rear end's a little misaligned. Back here, there's a rub mark on that. We're gonna address that with the adjustable uh, spoon pan hard bar here in the next video. But let's move on to servicing the engine and transmission before we wrap up today's video. All right, so the brake job is all done. What next thing I'm gonna do on the car is give it a little bit of service. What I've chosen to service the vehicle with is of course Amsoil. They are local to where I live and the racetracks. This is actually an effective way to support somewhere truly local. So I have 5W30 Signature Series synthetic motor oil. I do have a Wix filter, which they stock in-house at the Superior Warehouse. 
And what I did get is a few bags of the ATF for the T56 transmission. Metal protector is for obviously protecting metal. I'll not be using this on the car, but this is for other stuff. I just keep it around the shop. And the gasoline performance improver. Is, that's just something I like to put in my gasoline engine powered fuel systems on occasion. It is a good fuel treatment to care for your fuel system. So pretty straightforward. Let's get under the car, change the oil, transmission fluid, and work our way to the back. Where I'm gonna check out the differential and see what kind of shape that fluid's in. And we will go from there on servicing the CUTA. Well, it was dark, uh, nothing abnormal so far. So obviously I didn't run the engine or anything I probably should have prior, but at the end of the day, everything's all sitting and settled and the garage is probably, I don't know, 50 something degrees. So not at the end of the world at any rate. Drain plug all cleaned off. But anyway, I'll let this drain out and uh, crack the filter loose and swap it out for a new filter and fresh oil and off we'll go this summer. One of those jobs you can actually consider taking a nap under the car as a little peace and quiet. <laughs> Okay, so as we all well know on a transmission job, you're gonna wanna open the fill plug first. So if you drain it, you know, a lot of you guys know this, but if you were to go drain it, and for whatever reason, you weren't able to open up the fill plug, you can't really fill your transmission. Uh, I guess on a T56, worst case scenario, you can fill it through the shifter up inside of the car. It's a little silly, and then you won't know if you're at the proper level. But in my case, I'm going to fill the fill, or I'm gonna open the fill plug first, then go to the passenger side and open the drain plug. I'm really thinking with those neat little uh, fill bags. Ooh, that is tight. Probably hasn't been off in a while, I'm guessing. Which is fine, you know, no big deal. Okay. There we go. So obviously I was able to get in, but we'll see how full our transmission is here. Oop. And nothing came out. The car is sitting pretty level, so we'll see uh, what that translates to with fill volume. Think backwards here. Okay. This fluid could only have like 30,000 miles on it, so let's see what that looks like. Whoa. Almost went no almost went into the camera, but that's pretty red, not bad. Let it drain down here and off we go. Yeah, 
You know, honestly, fluid looks pretty good. Pretty, uh, pretty red, a little dark, but nothing crazy. I'm gonna clean up this drain plug, put a little uh, pipe sealant on it, and then I'll reinstall, then we'll fill the transmission. And that will be our transmission service. Just put that white pipe seal around that, and I'm going to look up, to find out if there's a torque spec to this drain plug and fill plug, which I'd imagine there is, but a lot of people go till the wrist gives out. But you know, I understand, you don't want it to fall, fall out or fail or whatever. But, uh, at the end of the day, uh, like, like them or not, I do believe engineers at times do things for a reason, you know, and this is, ooh, one of those situations. Careful. Easy. Put just the tip in the bucket. Okay. So there, I got that all cleaned up and I will know if there's any leakage or seepage or drippage, things like that when I go to fill on the other side. So let's hop the other side and uh, fill the transmission back up. So this goes as anticipated. These bags that, uh, you know, of course, lots of places make these now, service pouches or whatever you want to call them. This will be a game changer for filling up the transmission if it doesn't leak like crazy or make a gigantic mess because it is such a pain using a transfer pump or any other number of ways to do it. I mean, you can kind of pick your poison, but we'll see if I come out clean. I took off my sweater. Oh, look at that. Wow, this uh, went really slick so far, so going to continue on one quart I'm doing my best to reduce, reuse, and recycle here. At least get this to uh, the recycling center, not just into the earth. Three quarts. Fourth court. This capacity. It was running out there, probably noticed, and that is at capacity now. So uh, I'm gonna grab a wrench, snug that down all the way in a rag and clean up and we should be full, good to go. Well, that about does it for today's video. Um, 
in our house for the last couple of months, we've been trading illnesses and plagues like uh, like I've never experienced in my life. You know, with having two little ones, apparently, what everyone says and you see being around them when people have kids is true that we can't seem to get healthy to save our lives. So I thought I was gonna get everything done on the car uh, in this video, but this is gonna continue into a part two where I gotta clean the underside and wheel wells. And I also gotta get under there and give that strange S60 a service. And the last thing I'd like to do under the car is actually get the brakes blood as well and get some fresh fluid to all four corners. But anyway, appreciate you guys for sticking around. I know it's been a while since uploading a video, but there's been other stuff going on that's kept me busy. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.